In this tutorial, we're going to have a look at how to create some really lovely diffused bokeh effects. Now, just in case you wonder if I'm speaking in a foreign language, bokeh is a terminology, a technique that you would see in photography more often than anything, where you've got an image in the forefront that's very sharp and very clear and very crisp, and then a very light, dappled, diffused background, usually with little white circles of diffused light in there. As you can see in this card that I'm holding here, we've got one of those lovely colored backgrounds that we've already seen me create. And then you can see that we've got a range of different white circles of different translucency, um, which just adds an extra level of dimension. So it's taking a photography technique and applying it to our watercolor effects. And we can create some really impactive backgrounds that you know, with a simple addition of a little sentiment, a couple of gems and a ribbon, you've got a beautiful gift for somebody and you could use it for many different things. So enough talking. Let's have a look at how we do it. So what I've got here is exactly as we've seen in our previous background section, some random squiggles of color on a piece of watercolor card. You would just squirt this and let the color start to travel and do its thing. If you wanted to, you could help that along with a brush and give it a little swirl here and there. But when it's done its thing and when it's all started to move and dry, then you're going to end up with this. So this is exactly what I started with, a few random squiggles, a little spray of water, a bit of manipulation and that's my background. I'm just going to get rid of that little bit of over spray of water there because I don't want it just yet. Then what I've got is a little template I've just created myself by just die cutting some circles with a die from home um, at different sizes. I've got a little bit of stick and spray on here which is our repositionable adhesive and that's just going to keep it still while I'm using it. Now when I'm creating these circles what I don't want always is for it to be a full circle. I'll do a full circle first because you'll see how that happens but then I would alternate some off the side of the page. So I'm just going to put down my template and then I've got some of um, the Pebio white gesso which I love to use because um, it's a really high quality and you only need a tiny little bit. And then I'm going to use some water and I'm going to emulsify some of this uh, by just watering it down. Now, when you're doing a bokeh effect like this, the larger circles in the background want to be more translucent than the smaller circles in the foreground. That's how you really build up the 3D effect. So for the larger circle, I'm really watering that down and then I'm just painting the gesso over the template. So you can see that circle, but it is translucent. And I would do that for the background ones. Okay. That's lovely. And then I can peel up my template and you can see I've got that there. And if you need to mop up any overspill or any excess water, you can do that. And then I'll just clean my brush. And then I'm going to do a smaller one. And I'm not going to do too many because you'll see in a second what they look like when they're built up. And then because this is going to be further in the foreground, a smaller one, it's going to be more white than the previous one. So it's still a little bit translucent using the, the gesso, but it's uh, more white. More opaque, that's the word. I kept saying more white, I knew I meant something else. More opaque, there we go. And you can see how that's a little more obvious, that one. And then I would do the same with the smaller circle again. Make that more opaque. Now that I've got the right word. You see how I'm just painting directly over. And then any overspill I can mop up if I want, if I've got too much on there. Just make sure I'm happy with it. Peel it up. Oops. And then I can do the same down here. And this one I would go with really solid. Now, I would let them dry in between times because you can see here that my template's actually going to smudge that previous circle. I'm not going to worry about that for purposes of showing you now, but at home, you need to dry them between layers. So what I would do is use my heat gun between each one. So for example, I would do all of the big circles, dry them, all of the medium circles, dry them, 
all of the next size circle dry them each step of the way so that you're not smudging them as you go and then to get my smaller circles in into the thick gesso I just use the end of my paint brush and dot for the ones that are really in the foreground and that makes it really easy and really impactive and I do love this effect and that can just be random like that okay so as you continue what you get is a really lovely effect such as this where you can see that I've got the larger circles in the background that are a lot more diffused and then I've got the smaller ones more opaque and as they build up and get smaller and smaller they get more opaque all of the way and that is a bocker effect but I hope you agree it looks really impressive and that's how we made this little one here where all I've done is a sentiment a little piece of ribbon and that could be the front of a card but just so you can see what they do look like when they're into final finished projects this is on a different color background no sentiment on this just some flowers that could be an everyday card for anybody and then this one just a little bit more matting and layering on this one a little bit of ribbon a sentiment again just on a white card and I think you'll agree it takes a customized background with a little bit of an overlay of a circle and some addition of a couple of little gems on there and it looks beautiful I love it and it's dead easy to dead easy to achieve so create some bucket backgrounds of your own and let's see what they look like mm -hmm. 